Hey guys, this is Lewis. Today we're going to be using remote desktop services. As you can see, we're going to be using the same uh, setup that we have in our previous labs. So we're going to be using our NAT, our DACP, and also in place is our SCCM. To that, we're going to be adding RDSH1, RDSH2, and RDGW. As you can see on the side, we also have two deployments that we're going to be using for testing purposes. One thing is that uh, all this setup is already in place. We're not going to be uh, talking about how to join the domain or everything. So we're going to have those set up already. Remember to configure the IP schemes and remember to rename the computers. There's a couple of things that we need to do before we start and that's uh, enable remote desktop and the easiest way is through a GPO so we already did that, that's already in place. We're going to disable enhanced security on the servers and we're also going to install on RDSH1 and RDSH2, we're going to install DI Genome and Notepad++, again those are for testing purposes and we shall start we're gonna be heading to RDSH1 RDSH1 is gonna be our main screen this is where we're gonna configure most of this uh, of the walls today so make sure that you have it in place already As you can see, the IP scheme has already been configured. Our IP scheme has been configured. Uh, it's been already joined to the domain. So the first thing we're going to do is to add the other two servers to our server manager. We're going to add RDSH2 and RDGW so we can manage them from here without having to remote desktop or we have having to uh, go to those services first thing we're going to do is to add remote roles and, and features we're going to be selecting the remote desktop server installation Make sure guys that you read through it. Uh, we're gonna be using a standard deployment. Microsoft is very intuitive on what they do. So if you read the screen that you have in front of you, you're gonna be perfect, you're gonna be okay. We're gonna be using a session-based desktop deployment. And this screen is just a preview of what are we going to install. Again, just read through it and you're gonna be just fine. We're gonna be asking for it's asking us for the connection broker server. We're gonna be installing it on RDSH1. The next step it's going to be our next step it's going to be the web access role the web access role is also going to be installed on RDSH1 and as you can see Microsoft is actually Tell us that it's a good practice to install it where the server where the broker server is. So we're gonna be installing it in RDSH1. Server host. Server hosts are gonna be the two servers that are gonna be used to remote desktop. So RDSH1, RDSH2. after here is just a confirmation page make sure that you click the restart destination because it won't allow you to do anything else if you do not 
After this, we just wait. As you can see, the console starts installing the necessary roles on RDSH1 being the first the first server. After that we're gonna be, we're gonna be seeing the configuration and installation on RDSH2. Uh, make sure that you have added those two servers to the server manager so you are able to do this. Other ways to do it would be to install the roles manually directly onto our DSH2 and then using this uh, wizard to configure them. I personally feel that it's just a little bit easier for me to install them from here directly instead of having to go to that other server and come back to this server. Yes, it does take uh, maybe a couple of extra seconds, but it's nothing major. One thing that we are going to stress is that for this video I am not going to be using a certificate uh, authority so you will see that we do have some issues when we're trying to connect to the websites and when we're trying to connect to the apps. Uh, this should not and will never be used in a production environment. Again trying to emphasize the, the fact that this will never and should never be used on a, on a production environment. This is only for testing purposes and again, should never be used on a production environment. As you can see, RDSH1 is restarting. That didn't take that long. Little mistakes happens to the best of us, so please make sure that once you log in, you sign in as a domain admin, not as a local admin, as a domain admin. Okay, once we log back in, we're gonna see the continuation of the installation for both RDSH1 and RDSH2. Please give it, allow them, allow the server manager to finish. Give it enough time, it will continue, it will pick up the installation where it left off.
as you can see we're still in progress now it's connecting to RDSH2 and installing the necessary roles we're gonna be connecting to RDSH2 in a second but it's just going to be for logging logging into the server once the machine once RDSH2 restore it's gonna leave us on the welcome screen we're gonna have to log in manually I'm gonna pull up RDSH2 so we see what's going on over there As you can see there is not, nothing special right now is just restarting I'm gonna put up the, the pop-up video over here so we see it on the background And as you can see, the wizard is completing all the necessary installation and configurations. We're gonna head over here to RDSH2, log in as a as a domain admin. And we're gonna head back to RDSH1 to see the final configuration process. Everything is succeeded. Everything succeeded successfully. We're gonna close the wizard. I'm gonna add the other two servers to our RDSH2. Again, this is just for uh, testing purposes. I'm gonna add RDSH1 and RDGW. I'm gonna close this out since we don't need it. As you can see, the remote desktop services are all installed. We're gonna add the remote desktop licenses service. We're going to install it on RDSH1. We do not have the licenses available, so we're just going to install it, although we are not going to configure it. Once it's completed, we're going to go ahead and install the remote desktop, the gateway. It's asking for the server that is going to hold the, the, the role. We're going to select the server and we're going to click next. Make sure that you type the fully qualified name of the remote desktop gateway I'm gonna click next right now it's creating a self-signed certificate for that remote desktop gateway as I mentioned before we're gonna be using self-signed certificates for the other roles again this is not recommended for a production environment we're going to be using it for this lab 
for the single reason that we do not have a server a certific servers certification authority in place. If you do not have a certification authority in place, you could Google and get a certificate. So far, uh, we are not, like I mentioned before, we are not going to be using this on um, this lab. Again, this is not recommended for production environments. As we can see, we are installing and configuring the necessary roles on the remote desktop gateway server. We're going to have a couple of links over here down on the bottom. We're going to click on the configure certificate or we can actually do it later on. We uh, Let's jump right in and we're gonna go quickly through the different options. Remote desktop gateway, the licensing, remote desktop web access. This is the website that our users are gonna connect to and over here are the certificates for the first one we're gonna create a new certificate that we're gonna be using for the the next different roles we're gonna call it rd cert that pf ads we're gonna use our password we're gonna store this certificate For now, we're just going to place it on our desktop. And we are going to allow this to be trusted by the uh, to the domain. Make sure you click apply before you continue to the next because it won't let you do anything else until As you can see, our deployment status is not configured. We are going to end up with a configure status of untrusted. And again, I cannot stress this enough. This is only for the lab purposes. We're going to be talking about the certifications and we're going to be implementing a certif certification authority, but that will be done in later videos. Again, cannot stress this enough. This is only for lab purposes. We're going to end up with an untrusted certificate level. Just make sure you go through the wizard, adding the certificate to every single role. Make sure you click apply before you move to the next role. As you can see, it has a little warning telling us that only a single certificate can be added at a time. Finally, our remote desktop gateway certificate. I'm going to apply it. And 
and as you can see we end up with a certificate labeled of untrusted again this is only for testing purposes so we are not gonna deal with it very much everything's perfect so we're just gonna close down the wizard we are gonna head out to create a new collection a collection is the service that the end user will see when they first connect so we can have everything in place but if we don't create the, con the collection users will not be able to see anything the wizard is asking for our host servers as a default we have domain users as the one that can access those services we're gonna add the domain admins to the list just for lab purposes we are not gonna be using profile disk so we're gonna skip this step and we're gonna hit the confirmation page once we hit the confirmation page we just click create Once everything succeeded, we're gonna close the wizard and we're gonna head out to the collection folder. As you can see, there's different tasks that we can do over here, properties that we can go through. We are gonna publish our apps. You're welcome to click around and find what apps do you want to publish for this lab as I said before we're gonna be deploying DA genome and notepad plus plus The wizard is going to tell us that two apps have been deployed, everything looks good, so we're just going to close the wizard. And everything should be in place now. We're going to head to our computer called T1. This is just a test computer that I created, that I deploy using our SCCM. As you can see, it's a bare server. We're going to head to Microsoft Internet Explorer and we're going to try it. We're going to try it our deployments. We're going to try it our remote desktop sessions, I, I should say. The link to connect is rdsh1.contoso.com slash rdweb. We're going to be presented with an error, a certificate error. After that, we get to log in into our page. Again, we only receive those certificate errors because of the untrusted issue that we have. And as you can see, we can click around on the different apps that have been published for us, or we can connect to any computer inside the network. We're gonna test this out and we're gonna connect to our NAT. Our NAT is nat.comtosa.com. Asking you for the credentials. And as you can see, we are connected to the NAT. Let's check this out by going into the system overview. And as you can see, we are connected over here to the nat.contoso.com. 
we are remote desktop with our remote desktop servers. As you can see, everything is in place, everything is working great. Let's go back to RDSH1 and just click on an overview and see what we did. Today we set up a remote desktop service. We added the two session hosts, RDSH1 and RDSH2. In most environments, you're gonna have multiple collections. You're gonna have multiple remote desktop servers, a session host. Uh, we set up our remote desktop gateway and everything else, and we deploy two apps. Everything looks good, so we're gonna head up and I hope you enjoy the video and have a great day guys.